Welcome back to day three of B2B Lead Funnel Framework. Today, we're going to talk about know your audience and your persona, right, Paul? Yeah, absolutely. And this is really important because we have to understand how to speak our customers' language if we're going to cut through the noise and really communicate the, to them in a way that really resonates and makes them want to get excited about our business. And why is that important? Well, you know, the challenge that businesses have today is they're really confused with how to get their message uh, delivered in a way that makes sense to the customer. And, and there's reasons why it's not connecting. And number one, it's just confusing and disconnected. You know, we tend to use words and language that our customers don't use in everyday life. Another reason why we're not connecting with our audience is they don't understand the offer. You know, maybe you're doing a good job of communicating what you do, but they don't understand what you want them to do next. And then the next one is, you know, they're unable to differentiate our products from your competitors. Isn't that something that we all struggle with is how do we make our business look better to that customer that we can solve their problems better than the competitors can? And then finally, number four, they, we just can't seem to cut through that noise that we were just talking about earlier. So if you confuse, you lose. It's a curse of knowledge. We are too close to the fire to help understand the message sometimes. Right, and so what we're gonna do is help you cut through that noise and not confuse our customers anymore because when we don't confuse them and we really communicate and speak their language, good things are gonna happen for your business. The first thing we've gotta do though is kinda of look at the buyer journey and just understand what are they going through as they're thinking about and considering products and services. And so the first part of the process obviously is the customer goes, I have a need. There's something I'm frustrated about at my work uh, and I need to change it. And so that's kind of step one. What's step, step two? Step two is discover what the buyers are looking for and what else is available to them. And then the third step is enlightenment. So, you know, we've got a need, um, we're looking for what else is available to us, and now I'm enlightened. I'm ready to consider what are my options and how you might be able to help me solve my problem. And that leads us to the last part, Lisa. Commitment. They've got to have some skin in the game, right? Right. They need to understand, you know, how you're going to specifically meet their needs and how they're going to be able to take their business uh, or solve that problem that they're having with your product or solution. And so, when we think about getting our heads around our buyer, we need to think about them in the context of these four phases of the buyer journey. But we also need to take a look at, believe it or not, um, how our brains work. Because if we can get an understanding of really what's driving every human out there, then and we can communicate to those innate desires, then we're going to be in a really good position to position our products and services as a solution to what they're trying to accomplish. And it's really important, Lisa, to understand, you know, there's really two things that every one of us is trying to accomplish uh, in our brains. Deep, we don't even realize that it. it's happening deep down kind of in our guts. The first thing that we're all trying to accomplish, believe it or not, is survive and thrive. And I know that's hard to kind of get your head around when we live in a first world country like we do. but we're all actually trying to survive and thrive. So if I went to Lisa and I said, um, hey Lisa, I'm heading to Starbucks, I'd like to go, you know, can I get you a cup of coffee while I'm there? Lisa might be thinking to herself, wow, Paul's really nice, he's gonna get me a cup of coffee, that's really nice of him. What's really going on, and I don't even realize it's happening to me, is I'm thinking to myself, I'm gonna go get Lisa a cup of coffee because I want Lisa to like me. That way when the barbarians come over the hills to attack me, I've got somebody to fight with me. Believe it or not, that's really what's going on. Don't worry, Paul, I got, I got your back when those barbarians come and well, attack I'm, you. I'm really glad, I'm really glad. I guess that coffee's paid <laughs> off. The second thing that we wanna do is we want to conserve calories. And we don't want to be throwing up and vomiting information to our customers. They can't understand all this jargon. We need to keep it simple and we need to keep it easy for them to understand. So believe it or not, Paul, customers don't always buy the best products or solutions. I know, doesn't that, that seems like that would make sense, right? You would buy the best product or service for whatever issue or problem you're trying to solve, but that's really not what's happening. What's really going on is we buy the products or services that we understand from people that we know, like, and trust. 
That's right, Paul. So did you know that Apple was actually not the inventor of the first MP3 player? There was a company that produced one that was far better than the Apple product. But Apple had the right messaging in saying a thousand songs in your back pocket. And that made all the difference, right? Right. So let's take a look at how do we win more business in the context of everything that we're talking about today. So the first thing that we've got to do is define what the customer wants. And one thing that I really work on with clients or that we try to work on with clients when they first come and work with us is uh, really kind of getting into what does the customer really want. And believe it or not, it's hard for customers to, uh, or for clients to really articulate that. And so I do this exercise with them, or we do this exercise with them, we call it the five whys. And so, you know, we ask our clients, hey, what do you think your customer wants? And then they tell us that, and then we say, well, why do they want that, right? And then they tell us that, and we do that basically five times until we ultimately get to what the customer really wants. And that's really critical because we don't want to talk about the superficial things. We want to talk about what's kind of going on inside the customer. The next thing that we want to do to win more business is really identify the problems and obstacles that are in keeping them from accomplishing what they really want. So, you know, I've got this need. There's something in my way that's keeping me from getting what I want, and we want to understand those and we want to document those. The next step is a picture of what life would look like. So we want to understand, you know, what life would look like if they solved their problem with your company. But believe it or not, Lisa, we want to look at what would life look like if they didn't use your company to solve right. their problems, right? Because understanding kind of the bad news and not that we're going to use that a lot in our marketing, but we clearly want to understand what's it life going to look like if the customer doesn't solve this problem. It's just an optional message for them to use. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And then the last thing is we want to establish your business as the guide, not the hero. And this is something that Lisa kind of teased uh, in yesterday's message, but we really don't want to be the hero. We want to be the guide. And the reason for that is, believe it or not, all of us think we're the hero, right? Every morning when we wake up, we kind of step into our own story where, you know, when I wake up, I'm the hero of my story and Lisa is my sidekick. When Lisa wakes up, she's the hero of her story and I'm her sidekick. And so that same thing is happening with our customers and we want to make sure that we're not trying to be their hero because guess what? They think they are the hero. And so a much better place for us to be is not the hero, but the guide, right? So when you make your customer the hero of their story, it's like the Obi-Wan Kenobi to the Luke Skywalker, right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. And you know, you really don't want to be a hero anyways. They're kind of narcissistic and they're always talking about their problems, right? <laughs> Wouldn't you rather be Obi-Wan Kenobi and show them kind of the path to conquering the Death Star? Wouldn't that be so much more fun? And exciting. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So let's take a look at what guides do. So the first thing that guides do is they give them a plan. You're going to have to map out the journey of where that customer, where your customer is going to go. Right, absolutely. And then the next step is we need to offer resources. So, you know, it's not just them buying your product or service. I mean, ultimately, that's uh, our desired outcome. But we need to educate and inform them along the way. And we need to create resources that are going to help them understand how they're the hero and how they're going to solve this problem that they're trying to solve. The next thing is you always want to be talking about the problem that your customer has. Yeah, absolutely. When you stop talking about the problems, guess what? Customers are going to stop listening to you. And so we mentioned this plan, and I just want to show you an example on our website. This plan is really important. It needs to be everywhere, including your marketing materials on your website. Here's our plan. It's a real simple process. It's just three steps. Step one is an initial consultation, a discovery meeting. So the first step in your plan always needs to be that first step in your sales process. So our first step is basically having a discovery meeting with a client. The next step would be in our plan is we build a customized plan to achieve your uh, goals and objectives. And then finally, step three, we execute the plan together. We need to make it super simple, easy to consume. Remember, we're trying to conserve calories, so we want to do the work for them and make it super easy for them to figure out how to do business with us. So now we're going to talk about personas. What is a persona? A persona is a characterized representation of what your customer looks like. Yeah, and so you're going to actually get a chance to develop personas. That's going to be your homework. Lisa will talk about that a little bit later on. But every business needs a persona. We actually have a persona in our business. His name is Mario. And so Mario is basically a senior 
um, marketing person within a, a, a mid-market B2B company. Um, he's really trying to prove the ROI of marketing. Uh, he really wants to show that he's a strategic leader. And he, you know, it seems like marketing departments kind of get a bad rap all the time. And so our persona is the person that we want to look like a hero. And that's why we even talk about in this video series, we want to make you a rock star because you are our customer. Okay, so we've talked about personas. In the B2B world, there's really three key personas. The, the first persona is the C-suite, right? This is typically the decision maker. Uh, this is a person that when we're messaging to them, we want to talk about um, strategy and we want to talk about profit and cutting expenses. Those are the things that the C-suite really cares about. The next level in our personas that we need to think through is this manager. This is typically our point of contact. This would be that person that we're dealing with in the sales process. They're the ones that are gonna to have to implement whatever product or solution that you're recommending. And so we need to think about them as an, a persona. And then finally, we have the influencer. This is a guy that's gonna maybe get you introduced into the organization, uh, but he's also the guy that's gonna have to live with whatever your product or solution is. And the reason why we have to think through three different personas is when you think about it, they've got totally different perspectives and totally different needs as it relates to your product or service and the problem that you can solve. So now we want to make sure we know our audience. So let's dig a little bit deeper and really try to understand our audience. And so when we're thinking about how we're going to message to them, the first thing is we really need to understand our niche. You know, we have a saying at Vendi, uh, the riches are in the niches. And so it's not that you're just like in our case, a digital agency. We're a B to B digital agency. That's our niche. We know that we serve that customer the best. And so as you're thinking about developing personas, really think about who are your best customers? Who are the customers that love what you do the most? Who are the customers that you love working with the most? And really what is that niche that you can serve the best? The second thing is, where can you get their attention? Where do they hang out? Are they on LinkedIn? Are they on Facebook? Do you need to send them an email? How are you going to get their attention? Right, and then the last piece here is, you know, what is their title, their role, and position? And this is gonna become really important when you start advertising to get in front of these folks on sites like LinkedIn, for example, because you'll be able to target by their title, by their role, by the industry that they're in. So it's important to understand those things. And then, what do you want them to do next? What is the next step that you want your audience or your customer to take? Right, and that ties right back to the plan that we were just looking at a little bit earlier. So we need to think about what are those steps we want them to take so that we can point them in the right direction. Okay, so now that we know our audience, let's see how we're gonna target them. You know, we need to understand, are there target accounts? You know, in a lot of B2B companies, especially when you start thinking about that niche, you're gonna find companies that you want to target. So think about, are there businesses that I really want to focus on? Can I come up with a list of 400 or 1,000 actual company names that I would like to target? Uh, the next one is industry. So what industry uh, do I, can I serve the best, right? It goes back to that niche idea, but there really are you know, certain industries that we want to target and serve. And then company size. You know, at Vindi, you know, we work with B2B companies, but we like B2B companies that are like 50 employees to about 300 employees. And so that's who we target. And then finally, geographies. Maybe you're doing business all over the world or all over the United States, or maybe you're just doing business in select markets in the country. So it's important that you think through those things and you get those things documented. All right, so let's talk about our homework for day three. We're gonna use the persona developer that you got in your email to develop your ideal persona. You're gonna lock down these key elements in your workbook. Make sure you share them with us in our Facebook group. Tag us in the Facebook group and, and say, hey, Paul, hey, Lisa, I did my homework and I want you to look it over and give me some valuable feedback. Yeah, and you know what? You're gonna probably want to watch this video a couple of times. It is so important that you get your message right. And let me just kind of hit the, the big takeaways here. You know, one, you gotta invite your customer into their story, right? It's not your story. You're the Obi-Wan Kenobi, they're the Luke Skywalker, and you're gonna invite them into their story and how you're gonna help them accomplish their goals. We can never stop talking about their problems. Problems are what they're trying to solve. If they knew how to solve problems on their own, they would solve them themselves, right, They wouldn't Lisa? need you. <laughs> That's exactly right. And then number three, we need to position ourselves as the guide, not the hero. So have fun with your homework tonight. Super important that you get this right. We've given you a lot of great resources to help you with that. 
That's right, Paul. And so for day four, we are gonna develop our unique selling proposition. It's called a USP. You are not gonna wanna miss tomorrow, so stay tuned.